As a mom, I know that anxiety sets in real quick when someone starts vomiting in the house. In this video, we're gonna cover the stomach flu, symptoms to watch out for, how to avoid the rest of the family getting it, home treatments, and when to call a doctor. I'm Meg Conover, Physician Associate, Internal Medicine. If you like this video, have a look around, watch some others. The more you watch, the more it helps me get my videos to other people. So what is the stomach flu? This is a virus called gastroenteritis, almost always caused by a virus, but can also be caused by bacteria. Common viruses include the norovirus, rotavirus, and even enteric adenovirus in children. The virus and the symptoms usually last less than one week, but can last up to less than two weeks. Signs and symptoms include loose stools, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, not wanting to eat, fevers, usually under 101 degrees, and fatigue. In most of these viruses, you're gonna see the vomiting first. It can last one to two days and be pretty awful. The diarrhea will follow and can last longer, usually five to seven days. When it comes to managing the flu at home, there's a few steps you can take. First and foremost is hydration. You're going to want to get those kids fluids. They may not want to take them, so trying things like putting Gatorade or Pedialyte in a syringe, making it fun, doing Icy Pops can help. They may be more willing to take them. If you have an infant who's still nursing or using formula only, it's important to keep nursing and keep using formula. They will need to supplement with some water. I would contact your pediatrician for the exact dosing. Sometimes it's as little as one to two ounces of water in addition to the breast milk. Remember, when hydrating a child who's vomiting or who has diarrhea, Pedialyte and electrolytes are great. Fruit juices may not be as great. They can cause increased bowel movements due to the sugars that are in these types of fruit juices. If you wanna use a juice, maybe it's a better idea to water it down with half water. We've all heard about the brat diet for adults. When adults are sick, they say modify your diet. Bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast only until you're feeling better. Well, with kids, there are no diet modifications. They can eat whatever they like. Studies have shown that if you try to modify their diet like adults, they may get suboptimal nutrition. So let your kiddo eat whatever they're willing and whatever they want to eat. Of course, know that lean meats, yogurts, fruits and vegetables, and complex carbohydrates are usually better tolerated than simple sugars like those in fruit juices or sugary drinks. Let's touch on medications. When kids have the stomach flu, it's a little different than adults. You're not going to want to use things like Imodium or Pepto-Bismol. These can be toxic to children. The best home medications to use for kids are things like Tylenol or Ibuprofen to help with fever and discomfort. If you have a kiddo who's incessantly vomiting and you can't get it to stop, you can't get them hydrated, they're starting to look worse, I would call your pediatrician. There are prescription antiemetics called Zofran that can be prescribed for children. They have been studied extensively and are safe in children and they're pretty effective at stopping the vomiting. Things like probiotics may or may not be helpful. The studies are inconclusive and probiotics can be expensive. The strains that help aren't really agreed upon among professionals. You can try a probiotic if you like. It's not likely to be harmful, but we're uncertain as to how much they help in this situation. Most times the stomach flu will resolve on its own and can be treated just fine at home. However, there are red flag signs and if you see these, you're gonna wanna call your doctor or go in for a visit. The signs include a high or persistent fever, usually over two days and anything above or at 102 degrees requires a call to the doctor. The next one is blood in the stool. This type of virus causes lots of diarrhea and changes in the stool, but you not, should not see red or black stool in your child ever. If you see this, call your doctor. This goes the same for any blood in the vomit. Now let's cover prevention. It's all of our hopes when our child gets sick that the virus won't spread rampantly throughout the household and everyone will be sick. So what can you do to prevent it? Hand washing is number one. Antibacterial soap, adequate length of washing, and frequent washing are super important to prevent the spread of germs. Hygiene is also important. Washing surfaces, counters, doorknobs, 
with some form of antibacterial cleaner. If possible, you can also try to isolate the sick individual. It's not always easy, and if you have a young kid, that's gonna be impossible. But if you can keep the germs away, hopefully the other family members won't get the virus. That wraps up this video on stomach virus and stomach flu. Key points to remember, if your child is showing signs of this virus or flu, know that it usually resolves on its own. Hydration, rest, and comfort are paramount. And if you notice any red flag signs, such as fever above 102, blood in the stool or the vomit, increased lethargy, difficulty maintaining any fluids, or worsening dehydration, give your doctor a call. Also remember, it's not necessary to limit a child's diet while they have the stomach flu. I'm Meg Conover, Physician Associate. If you like this video, check out this one next. Give a subscribe or a like. See you on the next one.